Despite appearances, air quality in California is cause for concern, putting it in the same boat as every other state, region, and country in the world. Air pollution is a multi-headed beast. The EPA identifies six criteria air pollutants, all of which are damaging to our health and the environment. There are many causes of air pollution, but a key culprit is, not surprisingly, transportation. In California, transport is responsible for more than 40% of greenhouse gas emissions. It is important that we tackle this head on and electric vehicles are one of the key components to reducing emissions. California was the first state that in early 2016 required utilities to get involved in the transportation electrification with the SB350. The investor-owned utilities, the three large ones at first and then three smaller ones, filed programs to support transportation electrification. Encouraging drivers to trade their diesel engines for electric and hybrid vehicles is a big part of the battle. But equally, if not more important, is the need to encourage fleet owners operating medium and heavy-duty vehicles to embrace electric and other alternative fuels. SB 350 required utilities to launch transportation electrification pilots and 22 different pilots have been launched by six utilities in California. San Diego Gas and Electric has six. Through the medium duty, heavy duty program, we will be installing electric infrastructure for a minimum of 3,000 class two through class eight vehicles in our region, allowing a much quicker conversion of these nascent technologies. But we also want to make sure that we're opening up the market to private partners. A segment of the medium duty market where tangible progress is already being made is shuttle buses. Airport shuttles are a particularly interesting segment of transportation. These vehicles run frequently, therefore continuously contributing emissions to our region. These are the vehicles that travel through and reside in some of the most polluted areas of our territory, including the port and the airport. San Diego remains the busiest single runway airport in the country and has undergone a significant expansion in recent years. Currently, we have about 24 million passengers annually coming through our airport facilities. Uh, we suspect that by 2035, in that area, we'll have about 40 million passengers. One of the biggest focus areas is carbon management. The airport authority only has about 400 employees, but we have 9,000 employees that work at the airport. So it really takes a team and collaborative approach to looking at how we reduce the impacts of the airport. The focus on sustainability also includes incentivizing fleets that operate zero emission vehicles. The airport authority and our business partners have done a great job of switching initially to alternative fuels like compressed natural gas and propane. And now what we're seeing is another wave where there's a real opportunity to switch to electric vehicles. If you're investing in cleaner fuel, in cleaner vehicles that help our airport, help our community, we want to recognize that. And we do that by giving them lower fees for permits or trip costs. San Diego Airport Parking is one fleet that decided to make the switch to electric. We do 50,000 miles a year. You know, long hauls do 50 to 70,000. The regular vocation in our size of a vehicle does 25,000. As long as I do the same thing every day, I'm not taking risk by moving my vehicle so many different places and not knowing where I'm going to charge again. I can make a plan and I can stick to it. The Green Shuttle Pilot Program was an opportunity for SDAP to specifically get infrastructure installed. We wouldn't have been able to accomplish this without the subsidies in place. Having explored the option of retrofitting their existing vehicles, SDAP opted instead for a purpose-built electric shuttle. Green Power's EV Star, electric from the ground up. The EV Star for us was perfect for multiple reasons. We've got dual charging for AC and DC. It's got a fuel economy of 0.77 kilowatt hours per mile, which is phenomenal for a class four vehicle. It's got payload of 4,500 pounds. It's a beautiful bus inside and out. It gave us way more than what we ever thought we would have in a bus. We're proving right now that this is not only a smart decision for the environment, but it's a good business decision. 
And that's really where, you know, we've been trying to drive our foot in the ground a little bit, making these vehicles perhaps, you know, more reliable, more serviceable. And we've got some challenges ahead. I mean, the whole industry does. Um, but we're meeting them. The reason I like the space of the heavy duty vehicles and the medium duty vehicles is that they're on the road all the time. They're highly utilized. You and I can go out and buy a battery electric car, zero emission vehicle, and we're maybe on the road for an hour a day. These vehicles are on the road for 12 hours a day. So if you think about it, the amount of impact on the environment that these vehicles has is far greater. Lower maintenance is definitely associated with zero emissions vehicles. Uh, there's no transmission, there's no oil changes, reduced fluid maintenance. Uh, typically you can expect somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 50% increase in brake life due to regenerative braking. It might sound like a small incremental savings. However, when you start multiplying that for some of your larger fleets, uh, it represents a significant dollar amount. We really want to be able to share our charging infrastructure with other fleet operators that are interested in adoption. We do know that it's going to create challenges, and the more that we can support the technology, I think the better that we all can prove that it can work. I think one of the biggest things we can do is actually lead by example. So in the beginning of 2020, we're going to be receiving about 26 electric shuttles. And I feel like that is a really strong demonstration that this is technology that is ready now for implementation.